Guys, this is the real voice of Elizabeth Holmes, who had been faking a deep baritone while fooling Silicon Valley to the tune of 10 billion dollars, which we're talking about today. Check it out. Oh, it has it. Well, if I use traditional words... Ooh, the two octave switch, baby! No, it has it. Again. Well, if I use traditional words... No, it has it. Well, if I choose it. Guys, that's the level of sociopath we're dealing with in Silicon Valley, and she's not the only one, but we're going to learn from her today. We're going to take some big old lessons uh, in a new series I'm calling Silicon Valley Scammers. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the $10 million studio. I'm your host, Coffeezilla, and today, of course, we're taking a look at Elizabeth Holmes. You know her. You probably have heard of her. She's one of the most famous examples of how, hey, us normal people, not in Silicon Valley, we're not the only dum-dums. Listen, there's dumb money everywhere. It's a fact of life, right? It's not just, you know, uh, people in lower economic circumstances. There's dumb money everywhere. And it comes from different places. Some, you know, a lot of people we talk about, the fake gurus, they're preying on desperate dumb money. But there's also a type of dumb money which is different. It's where you have like affluent people in Silicon Valley and it's, I, ca I call it greedy dumb money, right? You can get dumb money a lot of ways, but those are the two primary. You have desperate dumb money and greedy dumb money. I feel a little less bad for this one, but it's still funny and worth checking out. But it's important to say, listen, there's a, smart, a lot of smart investors in Silicon Valley, but the problem is y'all are a little cocky in Silicon Valley. And sometimes you think, hey, we're just gonna apply like revolutionize the industry to every industry. They think like they got a little cocky because they got us with the, the computer, right? They got us with Airbnb, you know, admittingly you have had a few successes. So you getting cocky over there and then you're like, hey, let's, what? Uh, I don't know, what do I have on my desk? Nice, the Thin Mint, right? Like AI Thin Mints. How do we revolutionize the mug? How do we, everything has to be revolutionized. So, uh, this was taken to blood testing, right? And there was a young woman named Elizabeth Holmes who took the Silicon Valley world by storm. When she came out and she said, hey, I've got the new solution. I'm the next Steve Jobs. And you can even see it in the way she dresses. Listen, a lot of these people, they worship, they have altars to Steve Jobs in their home and they all dress like him. But that's not the point of this video. The point is, Elizabeth Holmes comes on scene. She's a 19-year-old dropout from Stanford. Uh, chemical engineering, I think, which is, yeah. I mean, you can't trust a chemical engineer as far as you can throw them. Trust me, guys. Okay, and so she comes on and she, you know what she did right? Because, I mean, this video is more about the psychology of how people got scammed. She played into all the prejudices of Silicon Valley. Like, the crazy backstory of a dropout who's gonna revolutionize the world with her little tech idea or his tech idea. That's a total Silicon Valley thing that they just fawn over, right? And then the TED talk or like the wannabe TED talk, this is TED Med, Silicon Valley just like, you show a TED talk, I mean, they get, they write an empty check. They're like, how much do you want? We'll give you whatever you want. And, and, and then the cadence, oh, I love this stuff. Look at this. Look at the way she talks. I believe the individual is the answer. Dude, like pregnant pauses every sentence. There's like 12 commas in between every uh, phrase she has. I believe, comma, 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 the individual, comma, 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 is the answer. And it's not like that all the way through. To the challenges of healthcare. But we can't engage the individual in changing What is this cadence of speech? Silicon Valley, you've gone too far. You gave this woman a $12 billion or $10 billion valuation? How? And it's not like they've learned their lesson. Look, you look at Nikola right now, dude. You know they at one point were worth more than Ford and they never sold a single car? I mean, like, nothing's changed. It's not like, oh, we found out, oh, she's a fraud. Oh, so we don't invest in frauds anymore. Dude, Silicon Valley, so much dumb money going around over there. And it's all because you guys keep falling for con people who, you know, they have vision, right? They like, they're like envisioning the future. The problem is it doesn't exist. Like they go to their engineers and they're like, hey, can we make, I had this great idea. Like, like, you know, it's like something you'd think about when you're stoned. I had this great idea. Like, let's just take a tiny pinprick of blood and do 12,000 tests on it. The engineer goes, yeah, we can't do that. 
and they think to themselves, I'm Steve Jobs, so I'll just throw them in a room and just like let them figure it out. No, you won't. And you'll be caught being a fraud years later. I mean, I really think that this like this con started with the same way a lot of silic real Silicon Valley things start, which is like an idea and then you kind of fake it till you make it. But in this case, what she was talking about wasn't currently possible with any technology. So it just was faking it until you're faking it. And that's called fraud. Taking on investors when you're faking your technology is called fraud. But make no mistake, this happens a lot in Silicon Valley. ...have access oh. to the information they need to do so. Uh, you could make a whole speech in the pauses of her speech. There's so much space in here. Um, what she does have going for her, too, is she's got that long vision. I mean, isn't this a great idea? Healthcare, where you don't have big pinpricks of and, like, 12 vials of blood drawn. Yeah, it's a great idea. Doesn't work. All the blood scientists, apparently, I was reading, they were like, yeah, we knew that this was a fraud, but nobody really asked us. Like, Silicon Valley was just pumping money into this startup. No one bothered to ask the scientists, like, whether this thing was possible. And listen, if you think, don't think I'm serious about, like, all you need to be a, a successful fraud in Silicon Valley is just, like, a backstory that Silicon Valley believes in. Check out what she named the machine that she was running these tests on, right? So she takes these, like, pinpricks of blood, right? They take this tiny little pinprick, and then they ran it in a machine. Let's see if we can find this. It's called the Edison. Guys, if you don't stop investing in garbage ideas with clever little names, I'm going to lose my mind. I mean, honestly, dude, look, do you think the market cap of Nikola would have been what it was if it wasn't named Nikola? Like, literally, that's the only reason. That's the only reason. You just give Silicon Valley people a clever name of some guy that they freaking worship, they lose their mind. It's like, hey, I'm calling this machine the Edison. Every Silicon Valley investor. I give you all my money. What? It's the Edison? Does that, that must mean it's as innovative as Edison. Ah! I'm constantly ragging on this like, because it's, it's such a problem. This is how people get scammed. People start saying, they throw buzzwords around, like uh, AI, or you know what? Honestly, when Elon Musk dies, somebody's gonna create a, a company called Musk and then everyone's gonna buy into it. Or they're gonna call it like Elon and everyone's gonna buy into it. Just cause we lionize these people and then someone takes their name and just goes, yeah, I'm calling my thing that now. Uh, and everyone throws money at it. It's, it's bizarre. Uh, of course, they re later realized that a lot of these systems weren't actually doing the testing they said they were, like they were doing testing the old fashioned way. Um, so they were, they were committing fraud throughout, but I really do believe it's just a case of, you know, having a concept, never having proof of concept, but ultimately the investor's not caring. They just throw money at you because they like, I don't know, Silicon Valley has this disease where they think, oh, there's no such thing as like real problems with, uh, technology. I, I don't know. I don't know. It just blows my mind. How could $10 billion have been thrown at something wh where nothing existed? It's all made up. It was all... A fraud. This is the part that I don't understand. Like, again, it's not like we've learned from this. The company Nikola, without selling a truck, became worth more than Ford. The company Nikola, without selling a truck, had a market cap over Ford. How, guys? Look at that. Market cap is worth more than Ford. It's because there's so much dumb money that doesn't ever question, is does this thing actually exist? I mean, this is like GoFundMe garbage, honestly, just at a higher level. It's it's the same crap that like Indiegogo people fall for, GoFundMe falls for, where they have a proof of concept that sounds great, doesn't exist, or sounds great, but isn't what it, they're saying it is. It, it's just given to investors. And like, that's the amazing thing is you'd think, oh, these people are so sophisticated, whatever. Um, but no, in fact, they can get just as greedy. They can get just as um, blindsided by just clever marketing. Really, that's what it ultimately comes down to. And this lady totally took advantage of that. She took advantage of the founder narrative that like every, every you know, revolutionary thinker is going to be a 19-year-old, which we have to get rid of, by the way. So, side note, sorry about this. Can we stop with the idea that 19-year-olds are going to save us, please? Can we stop with the idea that, hey, hey, you know who's going to save the world? 19 year old dropouts uh no i don't actually think they are <laughs> what are you kidding does nobody remember what it's like to be 19 
Like, you're an idiot at that point. And I, myself, I include myself in that category. I'm still an idiot, right? I wouldn't trust myself to change the world. I would not trust, especially some dumb 19 year old, right? They don't know anything. How are we trusting these guys? How are we, or girls or anybody? Like, don't we know that people get smarter as they age? They learn more, they get wiser. We don't care about that. We think, and it, it, again, it just goes back to like, we just have a few examples that have totally changed the perception of what a founder is now. Cause you have your Mark Zuckerbergs, you have your Jack Dorsey's, like all these basically young kids coming in, creating these tech companies that blow up to be giants. Now we think that's the norm. Now we think, oh, well, of course, if medicine's gonna get revolutionized, it's gonna be some 19 year old who fakes her own voice. Like, why? It, I'm telling you guys, this, this really heats me up, if you can't tell. <laughs> and look, it's not just dumb Silicon Valley people. It's also just everybody was kind of taken in and it's a good lesson for don't buy the hype. If you see somebody surrounded by famous people, but you've never kind of heard of them, you don't know what they do. It doesn't mean you should just blindly trust them and think, oh, just cause they're around, you know, Bill Clinton and Jack Ma, they must be legit. No, actually anyone can be fooled because it's just sort of a ladder of fooling. Cause obviously Bill Clinton didn't do his due diligence. Jack Ma didn't do his due diligence. They just kind of looked and they go, oh, this lady like seems to be respected by a lot of important people. And those people probably trusted her because they thought she was respected. Nobody actually took their time to figure out, wait, is this actually real? Uh, but yeah, he bought into, both of these guys buy into the same thing. Check this out. More a factor than I want to call in, Jack. You founded this company 12 years ago, right? Yeah. Tell them how old you were. I was 19. <laughs> so, don't worry about the future, we're in good hands. Yikes! <laughs> that didn't age well, did it, buddy? Didn't age too well at all. Don't worry about the future, guys. We've lionized the con man. We've given $10 billion to a con man, uh, or con woman, excuse me, excuse me, okay, excuse. We don't have enough women on the show. We, we're gonna bring more equality and representation, starting with Elizabeth Holmes, to the CoffeeZilla fraud universe. Again, you see the lionization of like, you're young and you're changing the world. Oh yeah, young people, da da da. Young people are the future. Yeah, that's by definition true, but, are they the future at 19? Yeah, they're not just, I don't, wait, I got myself twisted up in this analogy. My point is they're not the solution at 19, I guess is what I'm saying. <laughs> and uh, you gotta be clear when you're investing in anything, this is just a great lesson for everybody. Uh, Cause if Silicon Valley people fell for this, you could fall for this too. The, the thing is, don't buy into the hype just because it's hyped up. Don't buy into this like future promises just because it sounds like it's the future. Figure out, is the technology there? It's either there or it's not, It's a like it's a binary. Instead, people looked at the clever marketing, they looked at this person who checked all the boxes of like, this is the future Steve Jobs. And she even tried to dress like Steve Jobs. Instead of looking, does the technology exist? <laughs> Nobody checked. And because of that, so many people lost uh, a lot of money. They basically just lost their shirts on Theranos. Now she's basically facing trial on several charges, um, criminal charges, as well as she had a bunch of civil ones as well, and she awaits trial. So that's where we stand. But I think it's an interesting retrospective on one of the all-time great cons in the Sil Silicon Valley universe. Now there's a lot more and we'll be covering them. So let me know what you think. But I think this is a good primer because you're gonna see a lot of recurring themes. Silicon Valley people, they tend to fall for the same stuff over and over again. And we're gonna talk about it. So give it a like, subscribe if you like this kind of stuff and uh, I'll see you next time. I know what you mean, this ain't what it seems. Nothing but a trick, trying to sell me on a dream. But that was where you lost me. Wake up and smell the coffee.